uh, Might uh, Mining Corporation. He's the CEO of the company as of today. All right, thank you. Uh, so Mitre Mining is a relatively new company. It was in inception during COVID, so it's about two years old. We acquired the Cerebayo project January this year from Equus Mining. It was originally a Coeur d'Alene second asset, so it was built in 1994, so it's had about a th close to a 25 to 30 year lifespan. The acquisition was for, for about $4 million, and in that we acquired $150 million worth of processing facilities that are on warm idle, as well as a 50 million ounce silver equivalent resource at 311 grams per tonne. There we go. So a bit of an overview. The resource itself, we inherited 25 million ounces silver equivalent in the pit. We've since then, in the last month, first month of acquisition, doubled the resource to 50 million ounces silver equivalent at 300 grams per tonne. So it's about an 80 to 1 ratio for people wanting to work in gold at the moment. Their simple style mineralisation is a traditional low sulphidation epithermal system that's been weathered completely to the boiling zone at surface. So you see these high grade veins of percentile silver at surface which make it very easy in exploration. There's numerous undergrounds through the entire life of the project. I think there's actually about 12 current underground mines on site and three open pits. Metallurgy itself is plus 90% gold and silver with concentrate highly sought after in, in the percentile ranges of silver and hundreds of grams per tonne gold. The infrastructure itself was put in place in 1995 by Core Mining, as I said. It's a half million tonne per annum float plant. We have currently two and a half years worth of current capacity and another permitted lift on site. We have environmental permits over the entire project. The site has full offices, workshops. We have an on-site assay lab that can do 300 samples a day with 48 hour turnaround. We have power facilities, underground mining equipment, open pit mining equipment, full critical stores, warehouse with multi years worth of mill supplies available. The project itself, the project itself is located in the town of Chile Chico, which is in the ASN region of southern Chile. It's within 10 kilometres of the border of Argentina. The company itself, as I said, it's only relatively new. We actually completed the acquisition January this year, so since that time we've gone from roughly about 20 cents through to 45 cents, so a market cap of about $40 million. The major holder is Steve Parsons from Bellevue, and most of the board and management are Firefly Metals, Bellevue and Griffin. The board and management so far, so a non-executive director, a lot of familiar faces here to people, Ray Shorex, who was one of the founders of Bellevue, as was Steve Parsons, Michael Naylor. They've also recently found, re-established Firefly Metals as a copper producer in Newfoundland. Today, we also welcome Dave Southern to the board from Mincor Resources. So a lot of uh, heavy hitting power in this, and that's the belief we have in this project. Our CEO and exploration manager on the ground, Damien Gorba, He's had 25 years Latin America experience through Argentina, Chile, Peru, Brazil. He spends about nine to 10 months of the year over there. Bilingual, has worked for Newcrest Billiton, MIM, was one of the original exploration geologists and discoverers of, for Mirasol resources. So why silver? Historically, everyone knows silver as the poorer cousin to gold, monetary value. What some people don't know is that in the last three years there's been a structural deficit of silver to production. The world produces about a billion ounces and uses average about 1.2 billion ounces of silver worldwide. The most growth industry is photovoltaics, 20 grams of silver per kilowatt. It's also used in applications of electrical, so your EV industry. Future technologies is highly used in 5G networks, hydrogen storage technology and lithium extraction from seawater. It's one of the most conductive metals on earth so, and it's one of the most antibacterial metals in Earth, so it's used in dentistry, um, coating medical services and medical imagery, water purification systems, and of course financial. Where we see silver going in the future, with this deficit in silver production, they have to come from somewhere. Currently it comes from your vault stocks, your LME, CME, SGE and Shanghai. So they're all down over the last three years to meet this demand of 440 million ounces. Current ratio, there's about eight years worth of vault stocks left in the world before there is nothing to make up that deficit. In comparison, to make up that deficit, 
150 million ounces equates to three Fresneo silver companies producing silver brand new, which is the world's largest silver producer. The mine itself, as I said, it sits in the ASEN region of Chile in the Desiato Massif, so that dark brown area which stretches from the eastern seaboard of Argentina through to Chile. Some big hitters in this area, it's a traditional epithermal zone, Cerro Negro, 7 million ounces gold, 50 million ounces silver, Cerro Vanguardia, 8 million ounces gold, 100 million ounces silver, as well as Pan American, Hothschild, McEwen Mining and Patagonia Gold and hundreds of other smaller exploration projects. We're the only low sulfidation deposit discovered on the border, on the Chilean side of the border. Zooming in further, the mine itself covers about 300 square kilometres of mining tenure. Historically, there's been about 91 million ounces of silver equivalent in today's ratios being mined through the project over the last 25 years. 48 from Cerro Bio District and 43 from Laguna Verde. Our 50 million ounce resource currently sits in the Laguna Verde District, proximal to the mill where we want to establish the base resource. Zooming in further, the Laguna Verde operation itself hosts the processing facility, see in blue, and a 50 million ounce resource in the Coida, Delia, and the Taitao load and stock work pit, open pit. The current plan is to re-establish this resource, mining completely different gold and silver environments. Coeur d'Alene mined it up until the mid 2000s when gold and silver went through the floor and they just walked away from it, sold it to Mandalay Resources. Once we re-establish these base case resources through the Dagny, Fabiola, Tranqui, Yunkos, Tema, Condor areas, we have rigs currently drilling at the Pegaso 7 and the Cristal targets. We see extreme growth through the Pegaso area, vein swarms 150 metres wide on surface. You can see the rock chips there are 1.6% silver and 19 grams per tonne gold. This is a pure gold-silver system, there's no base metals in it. Zooming into the open pit itself. The open pit itself is more gold over silver, as it's higher in the system. It's more of a bulk, broader zone. We like the open pit as because it establishes your base case for future mill feeds with high grade feeding to it. I say a base case and high grade feeds, the pit is still running at two and a half grams per tonne gold over some of the intercepts 35 metres at 63 silver and 2.75 gold. The strip ratio on this is close to zero as it is all exposed at surface and only goes down to 50 metres. Zooming into these high grade zones that I'm talking about for our high grade feeds, the Delia Southeast, why we're so easily be able to upgrade the resources rapidly over a period of month. All these drill hole pierce points were drilled by previous operators in 2015 and 16. So we have a plethora of information to pull from to actually upgrade these resources quite easily for zero cost. So you can see some of these intercepts at the bottom of the deposit, uh, 1.25 at 7,000 grams per tonne silver and ounce gold, 5.5 metres at 868 grams per tonne silver and 23 gold. So I said it is a pure, the veins are weathered to the boiling zones of these systems. The Coida vein, stepping back further, the other second vein that we brought in, the Coida North and South, this vein is a linear vein, 1.4 kilometres long, already established infrastructure put in in 16 and 17 by Mandalay. The decline itself, itself is already extended probably about halfway towards the Coida, Coida Southeast Mine. Coida Southeast Mine, for ratio, it's about 862 grams per tonne, or 11 grams per tonne gold equivalent, with pretty significant grades. And it's, to get to access that mine, it's about 680 metres, one in seven, straight from the existing decline down to it. As I said, infrastructure is still in place, primary fans are still connected, power, water, air is still to the mines. Why we see the upside after we build these resources out. So within a kilometre of this plant, we have the Cristal Discovery. The veins themselves, there are little slot cuts on surface that were mined 30 years ago by Coeur d'Alene. Much different gold price, they're down to about 10 metres on surface. We've made this new discovery three weeks ago within one kilometre of processing plant on a road that's been driven past for the last 30 years. We extended the Coeur to central zone by 300 metres, channel samples on the ground, half a metre at 2% silver, mostly gold and silver. Rock chips up to 3.9% silver equivalent, 3% silver equivalent straight off the ground. Consistent, linear, over 300 metres. What we're hoping to see in this zone is similar to what you can see up the north, those 24 metres wide intercepts where you're getting big, broader zones for open pitable material. 
Stepping out further, moving to the Cerebio district. This was the original Coeur d'Alene mine site. So they mined the Cerebio underground, Marcella underground, and Wanako and the rail pits. Cerebio underground is an underground that stretches two kilometres long and only goes down about 200 metres below surface. You can see all the red veins in that have been mapped on surface. Most of these don't have drilling below them. They've been focusing purely on where these veins outcrop at Wanako and Cerebio. How we see the discovery again in this area, six months ago, was the new discovery of the Claudia Rail West veins. So the green road that runs past it is the actual main road in the district. We have a vein running 1.5 kilometres that has intercepts of 8,000 grams per tonne silver and 100 grams per tonne on surface at 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 metres wide, consistent over the entire area. As I said, we're proximal to the town of Chile Chico. All the mine staff from, that existed at the mine during the time is now living in that mine, waiting for the mine to restart. So we have skilled labour on site, ready to go at any time. We have a TSF facility, crushing, milling, offices, workshops. We have power, we have 16 megawatts of power plus 1.8 megawatts of wind power. At peak operating capacity, the mine only uses six megawatts, so we have two and a half times required to restart the operation. We have water rights for 800 litres a second of water, core logging facilities, we have warehouses, critical spares for the mill worth four million US dollars, backup power, underground and surface mining equipment on site as part of the acquisition. The operation existed for so long that there is extreme, le I say extreme high level of community support for the project. At the time, this project at peak um, production provided 80% of the revenue for the ASEN region in southern Chile. It sponsored sporting groups, community programs and infra infrastructure investment through the, through the areas. We've had strong support from the government regulatory bodies for the progress of the mine and to make it exemplar of mining and community interaction in the region. MITRE is also committed to the best practice and rehabilitation of environmental stewardship in the region, understanding that it is a sensitive region that we operate and we support, apply the same practice that we would in Australia. Just a quick overview, Australian markets don't really value silver. And I said, it's in a complete deficit, but the Australian markets typically have valued projects about below that one level, whereas the North Americans value about that one to 2.25 EV resource basis. And you can see that in the valuation of your Dolly Varden, Go Gold, New Pacific and Vistler Silvers range. And we saw that when we we're marketing PDAC earlier this year that for every one investor that talks to us from Australia, we have three from North America coming to talk to us. The news flow now. So, as I said, we're currently, we only had this project for a month and a half. We've doubled the resource. We're currently compiling 30 years worth of information of the entire district and putting it together, rebuilding all the resource around Laguna Verde, proximal to the mill first, then repeating the process at the Cerebio mine. So there's a plethora of drill and, and mapping data that needs to be put together again. At the same time, resource drilling of one ring on the ground at the moment and going to be progressively ramping that up every quarter. To do this thing justice, you probably need those three to four draw rings running at any on time. Multiple resource upgrades. We achieved one in the Q1. We've got one coming in early Q3 as well. Once we build that base case resource, we'll then move into regional exploration. I've touched on Cerro Diablo and Los Domos. Cerro Diablo is more of a Hod Madden style deposit, a VMS style mineralisation where we're getting 20% copper on rock chips on surface, proximal to the mine, and your Los Domos, which is more of an intermediate sulfidation deposit. Once we build that resource, it will then flow into your mine studies. So as an overview, as I've said, we sit in that southern region, ASEN region, Desiata Masses of, of Chile, large deposits, some world leading miners in that region, we have rapid immediate resource growth through this large investment in drilling that's been put in the last 30 years, as well as the local knowledge on site. Our resource geo was the original exploration geo there 30 years ago. So we have maintained all that, all that knowledge base on site. $150 million worth of infrastructure on site. The mill is in warm idle, as I said. It's spun every month. The, the conveyor belts are spun every month. Pipes ready. It was run a year ago. I think it was when it was shut down. Thank you.